My fingers grabbed to my side as waves of searing anguish surged through my body as I lay on the chilly kitchen floor. Inside me, it felt like a knife was twisting. Ella, my seven-year-old daughter, stood nearby, her small face etched with terror. Mommy, are you all right? Ella's voice trembled just above a whisper. Despite my pain, I attempted to seem encouraging. I'm going to be all right, honey. Just a nasty stomach ache, I lied, trying to conceal the degree of my discomfort. Footsteps sounded down the hall as my husband, Oliver, stood in the doorway, his face irritated rather than concerned. He was packed and ready for his vacation. What's the matter, Sophia? Why are you lying on the ground? Oliver inquired, his voice tinted with annoyance. Oliver, I believe you have appendicitis. It's terrible. We must visit the hospital. I managed to choke out a few words, each one punctuated by anguish. He laughed at me. Appendicitis. You're probably exaggerating. It's most likely indigestion. However, Oliver, I believe a sharp shock of agony that caused me to flinch cut off my remarks. Oliver looked at his watch, his annoyance evident. I can't afford to miss this trip with Hazel. Simply call a cab or something. What I was hearing was unbelievable. I can't even move, Oliver. Ella has arrived. I need you. I begged, my voice trembling with desperation. Unmoved, he shook his head. I'm confident it's nothing. Call if the situation worsens. He walked away, his suitcase trailing behind him. Ella and I were left alone in our misery. Her tiny hands found mine, and her tears matched mine. Don't get sick, mommy. You must be okay. I gathered my meager power and drew Ella closer. I've arrived, dear. Mommy has arrived. With Oliver no longer in the picture, I realized I had to act. I scrambled for my phone, dialing the only person I knew I could rely on, my brother Caleb. The telephone rang. The boom is resonating in the otherwise calm kitchen. Hello. Caleb's voice was a ray of light. Caleb, this is Sophia calling. I require assistance. I believe it is appendicitis. I can't move, and Ella is scared. I explained that each syllable is a strain. Caleb's calm and forceful voice broke the startled silence. I'm on my way right now. Hold on there, Sophia. I'll be there as soon as possible. I closed my eyes as I leaned back against the cold tile, attempting to block out the pain. Ella snuggled up next to me, her presence a small solace. A resolution arose within me at that instant. Oliver's abandonment in my hour of need would not go unnoticed. It was a severe cut, a betrayal that signaled the start of a new era. One thing was evident while I waited for Caleb. Nothing would ever be the same again. I was going to ensure it. The clean white walls and mild beeps of the machines around me felt strangely cozy as I lay in the hospital bed. Although my appendix operation went well, Oliver's abandonment left a gaping emotional wound. I had managed to contact my parents and ask them to look after Ella while I recovered, their voices full of concern and implicit inquiries regarding Oliver's absence. I was back home three days later, the physical agony a dull reminder of the trauma. Ella raced into my arms, her face brightening upon my homecoming. Mommy, you've returned. Are you all feeling better now? Her innocent query prickled my heart. I'm on my way, baby, I said, squeezing her tightly and being thankful for her presence. The next day, the sound of the front door smashing open disrupted the peace of our reunion. Oliver and his sister Hazel stormed in, their voices shrill with rage. Why didn't you come get us yesterday? We had to pay extra for a taxi and rail tickets. As he entered the living room, Oliver's voice was loud and accusatory. I was filled with rage at his arrogance. Hello, and welcome back. 
You must have had a difficult time, I remarked bitterly, glaring at him. Oliver came to a halt, taken aback by my cold reception. The tension in the room appeared to surprise Hazel as well. Sophia, what's up with your attitude? Oliver inquired. I couldn't keep quiet any longer. While you were away on your vacation, I was in the hospital. I explained, my voice steady but brimming with rage. And you, Hazel, who is continually requesting Oliver's time without regard for his family, Hazel's face flushed, and Oliver looked perplexed. What are you on about? You were fine, correct? He answered in a contemptuous tone. It's more than just being okay, Oliver. It's about being there for your family when they need you. I shot back, my rage spilling out. The living room door opened before Oliver could react, and Caleb, our parents, and Oliver's parents entered. Fourteen eyes were riveted on Oliver and Hazel, filled with varied degrees of rage and disappointment. Why is everyone gathered here? Under their collective gaze, Oliver's voice trembled, his confidence dwindling. I inhaled deeply, channeling my anguish and betrayal into words. Oliver, you abandoned me and Ella when we needed you the most. I needed to be hospitalized, and you were not present. I've told both of our families everything. Oliver appeared to shrink beneath the weight of my comments, his customary bluster gone. His gaze darted around, looking for an ally but finding none. It isn't just this one instance, Oliver. My brother Caleb said, his tone tinged with disappointment, it's about all the times you've put Hazel's needs ahead of your own family. Hazel, who was normally so confident, was uneasy, her gaze darting from the floor to the angry faces around her. Oliver attempted to justify himself, his words a jumble of explanations and poor justifications. The fight was heated, and the air was dense with tension. But that was a watershed moment for me. I realized I couldn't live in the shadow of Oliver's neglect any longer. It was time for a change, for me to advocate for myself and Ella. The meeting concluded without a decision, but the message was apparent. Oliver's carefree veneer had been shattered, and I had the support of both of our families. As they walked away, Oliver's parents offered me a sympathetic look, a non-verbal acknowledgement of their son's flaws. The events of the day replayed in my thoughts as I lay in bed that night. I felt a mix of feelings, including rage, disappointment, and a newfound strength. Oliver had revealed his true colors, and it was now up to me to reclaim control of my life. The days that followed the altercation were filled with unspoken comments and anxiety. Oliver pretended nothing had changed, but the air between us was thick with the unspoken. Those days were spent reflecting, comprehending the extent of my misery, and recognizing the necessity for change. It wasn't an easy decision, but it felt vital, like a breath of fresh air in a long, stuffy chamber. One evening, as Oliver sat on the couch, casually browsing through the channels, I approached him with a folder in my hand. My heart was racing, but my resolve was unwavering. We need to talk, Oliver. I continued, my voice steady. He raised his head, a smirk crossing his face. Sophia, what now? I inhaled deeply and handed him the folder. I'm looking for a divorce. Oliver glared at me, his face contemptuous and mocking. Divorce? Sophia, don't be ridiculous. You're being very dramatic. I shook my head feeling a surge of confidence within me. It is not an exaggeration. I've given this a lot of thought. You've always prioritized Hazel and your needs over mine and Ella's. I can't go on living like this. Oliver's mouth curled into a scowl. You believe you can handle things on your own. Sophia, don't be so naive. His statements were meant to hurt, but I remained firm. I'm not gullible, Oliver. I understand what this means, but I'd rather confront that uncertainty than be invisible in my own marriage. He laughed coldly and harshly. Sophia, best of luck. 
You'll come crawling back once you discover how difficult things are out there. I could feel my rage growing, but I kept my cool. I won't. This is my decision, and I intend to stick to it. Oliver appeared to be about to protest further, but then he shrugged, an arrogant sneer on his face. Okay, do it your way. But keep in mind that I warned you. I felt a combination of feelings as he returned to the TV and dismissed me once more. Yes, there was fear, but there was also a freeing sensation of freedom. I was finally taking charge of my life, emerging from the shadows. The following day, I initiated divorce proceedings. It was a difficult procedure, fraught with paperwork and laws, but I was unfazed. My parents and Caleb were both encouraging and supportive. During this period, Oliver's genuine personality began to emerge. He was condescending and unhelpful in his attempts to scare me into giving up, but I resisted because of the support of my family and a growing awareness of my own power. Oliver's veneer began to disintegrate as the days passed. My charming, confident husband was proven to be greedy and deceptive, his true colors on display for all to see. The divorce proceedings were difficult, but I tackled them head-on, each step forward a tribute to my newfound determination. I was no longer the woman who was disregarded and in pain on the kitchen floor. I was a lady fighting for her life, dignity, and happiness. The divorce was a grueling process, highlighted by Oliver's constant attempts to undermine and demean me. During our sessions, he would frequently smirk, making sarcastic remarks about my ability as a mother and my prospects without him. But his remarks, which had once been crippling, had simply fueled my drive to break free from his toxic grip. Oliver teased Sophia during one of our final sessions, enjoy your life of struggle. You'll soon understand how lucky you were to be with me. His audacity irritated me, but I kept my cool. I'd rather suffer every day than spend another second with someone who doesn't value his family, I answered, my voice firm. For a brief moment, Oliver's arrogant grin was replaced with a flash of rage. He quickly covered it up with a sneer, but I could tell my words had struck a nerve. I felt an odd mix of relief and worry the day the divorce was finalized. I was finally free of Oliver, but the road ahead was terrifying. Nonetheless, as I walked out of the courthouse, a sensation of relief washed over me. I was prepared to face whatever obstacles awaited me. Oliver's life began to collapse in the weeks that followed. His careless behavior and divorce became the talk of the office. Colleagues who used to admire him now looked at him with pity and scorn. His pleasant exterior had crumbled, exposing his pettiness and selfishness beneath. The news of our divorce and the reasons for it quickly went across our neighborhood, due primarily to my cousin, a well-known figure in our society. Oliver, who had always taken care of his appearance and reputation, found himself the target of whispered comments and disapproving looks. Hazel, too, was met with criticism. Her meddling in our marriage was now widely known, and friends and neighbors began to regard her with suspicion and contempt. The solid link she had shared with Oliver was now strained and uneasy. I overheard Oliver and Hazel arguing outside their house one evening while picking up Ella from school. Their voices were tinged with bitterness and blame. We're in this situation because of you, Hazel. Oliver yelled, clearly frustrated. How could you possibly blame me? You are the one who was unable to keep your family together. Hazel retorted, her voice shrill with rage. Their argument was diametrically opposed to the united face they had previously exhibited. Their deeds had finally sown the seeds of dissension, and they were now suffering the results. I felt a sense of vindication as I walked away with Ella. Oliver and Hazel were finally dealing with the consequences of their selfishness. It was a terrible lesson, but it was one they had chosen. That night, while Ella slept soundly in her bed, I sat by the window, thinking about the previous several months. The path had been challenging, but it had brought me to a position of strength and self-esteem. I had fought for my honor and Ella's future, 
and while the road ahead was uncertain, I was prepared for whatever came next. I felt ready to confront it with renewed vigor. Life settled into a new pace following the divorce, one that was quieter but more fulfilling. My unhappy marriage's shackles had been removed, and in their place was a renewed sense of independence. With Ella by my side, I began to reconstruct my life piece by piece. My first step was to find work. Although the gap in my resume due to years of parenthood was a problem, I was persistent. After numerous interviews, a small accounting firm hired me. The environment was supportive and accommodating, and the firm's leader was a woman who supported empowering working mothers. It was the ideal fit for me. Ella handled the adjustments with the tenacity that only children have. She began kindergarten, and her days were filled with new friends and learning. Her laughter and talk filled our home with delight, a welcome change from the uncomfortable silence that had previously enveloped it. The echoes of my past with Oliver, however, were not fully erased. While dropping Ella off at school one afternoon, I overheard a group of parents whispering, that's her, Sophia. Her spouse allegedly left her because he couldn't handle being around her any longer. Their words pricked me, but I kept my head held high. The gossip and judgment were minor costs for the freedom and quiet I now enjoyed. Meanwhile, Oliver's fall was continuing. His pride had taken a knock, and his formerly clean reputation had become soiled. Mutual acquaintances informed me that he had moved back in with his parents, a fact that he tried to keep secret but eventually let slip. Hazel's condition was no better, her interference in our marriage had caused her to lose many of her friends. The previously inseparable siblings were now barely communicating, their bond fractured by guilt and sorrow. As for me, I found peace in my family's support. Caleb, my brother, moved closer to us and was a continuous source of comfort. My parents adored Ella, their affection was a salve for the wounds of the past. While sipping coffee in my kitchen one day, I reminisced on my journey, the anguish, the battle, and the liberation. Everything had led me to this point of peace. I had not only survived but had also emerged stronger and more confident. The doorbell rang, jolting me out of my reverie. I opened the door to find Oliver standing there, a defeated expression on his face. I'm sorry, Sophia. I had no idea what I had until it was gone. His apologies, however late, validated my decision. Thank you, Oliver. I murmured politely, but it was too late. I've progressed. I felt a sense of closure as I shut the door on Oliver and the life we formerly shared. The chapter of my life that he had been a part of had ended, and a new one had begun. A chapter in which I was the creator of my own story, free to write my own destiny. Ella's voice shouted out from the living room, making me grin. I approached her eager to embrace the life that lied ahead of me, a life full of possibilities and optimism.